Hi, I'm Melina. I attended a coding bootcamp this year and I found a job quickly after finishing the coding bootcamp. But I've seen a lot of coding bootcamp graduates who are struggling to find a job. So I wanted to share how I found a job in about a month, step by step, along with tips that will help you get hired. The first step will be to figure out your career path. You want to figure out what type of positions you want to apply for. The most popular path for bootcamp graduates tend to be becoming a software developer at a company, and that's what I wanted to do as well. But even within that, you might want to be a front-end developer or a back-end developer or a full-stack developer. I wanted to start out as a full-stack developer because I wanted to gain experience on both front-end and back-end. But this will depend on your preference. Some other possible paths include becoming a product manager or becoming a freelance developer or a DevOps engineer, just to mention a few. If you're unsure, try looking at the job description of these roles and talk to people who are already working in these roles. Of course, you don't have to have it figured out for the rest of your life, but I recommend having at least a general idea of what kind of positions you want to apply for because a resume for a front-end developer versus a product manager would look different and how you prepare for your interviews would look different as well. So you might come off as someone who's just applying to everything out there and not get good results. Step number two, update your resume. As soon as I knew what kind of position I want to apply for, I started updating my resume. Your resume is like an advertisement to sell yourself. It includes your past experiences, education, and interests. And what's different than the resumes you may have written in the past would be technical skills and projects. If you went to a coding bootcamp, you're most likely looking for technical roles like a software developer, which means you should include your technical skills and projects, preferably at the top of your resume where it can easily be seen. Remember that the resume is not for you, it's for the reader, the recruiter. So you have to make sure the resume is easy to read. Choose a font size and font type that is easy to read and try to make your resume within one page. Step three is more of a question. Do I need a cover letter? This is one of the things I wondered about myself when I was applying and after I got my jobs, I been asked a lot if I submitted a cover letter and if they should be submitting one. I personally did not submit a cover letter to any of the companies I applied for. The reason why I did not submit a cover letter is because I didn't think I will be able to customize my cover letter to each of the companies. So I was thinking if it's not going to be an amazing cover letter that's tailored toward each company, I might as well not submit one. And a lot of companies didn't even require one. Recruiters might not have the time to read all the cover letters, but if you submit one, it can show that you put in the extra effort. And when you have two candidates who have very similar background and experiences, an exceptional cover letter can set you apart. These are just my thoughts and I'll leave the decision of whether you write one up to you. Step four, make a portfolio. Besides a resume, I put together a very simple website. I use Drupal, which is a portfolio builder you can use to showcase your work. It would be even better to code your own website that is hosted on your own domain, but I wanted to start applying right away, so I just used this site. Again, like the resume, I think it is the best when the portfolio is clean and easy to follow. And it's nice to provide links to every hosted project and their GitHub repositories. Step five, update your LinkedIn. Once I had a resume and a portfolio website ready, I updated my LinkedIn. I added the coding bootcamp I went to and I enabled the open to work feature on my LinkedIn profile. This way you can let hiring managers, recruiters, and people in your network know that you're looking for a job. When I turned this feature on, I was contacted by a lot of recruiters, so I don't think it would hurt to turn this feature on unless you're currently working for a company or something. I also added my technical skills on my LinkedIn profile and a couple of my classmates and I endorse each other, but I don't think this is that important. Step number six, search for jobs and apply. I read the job description and I applied if I met most of the required skills. 
You don't need to meet all the requirements to apply, but if the job description says they're looking for someone with 3 plus years of Python experience, then I didn't apply because I don't know any Python. I searched and applied for jobs mostly through LinkedIn. But if your bootcamp has companies they partner with, you'll probably have a higher chance of getting interviews if you apply to those kind of companies through your bootcamp because if a company partner with your bootcamp, it means that they are interested in hiring those bootcamp grads. But no worries if your bootcamp doesn't offer something like this or if you're self-studying because I got my job through LinkedIn. I've seen students who are hesitant to apply to jobs because they feel like their coding skills are not good enough or they feel unprepared for interviews. So there's bootcamp grads who want to polish their coding skills before applying, but there's also students who just apply and see where it goes. I was the one who was like, let me just apply and see where it goes. If I don't get an offer or if I don't get through the first or second round, I'll just take it as a learning opportunity. I think this is a matter of preference and how confident you feel after graduating from the bootcamp. So I basically submitted my resume through LinkedIn as soon as it was ready after the bootcamp. And I'll also talk about what I did while I was waiting for interviews later in this video. A tip I have is to keep track of your applications. You can start with a list of potential roles and keep notes as you start applying. It can include things like how you applied, whether you applied through a recruiter, or through an online website, and when you submitted your application. Step number seven, study and prepare for interviews. While you're waiting for interviews, I mean, the best thing you can do is continue coding and continue applying for jobs. My coding bootcamp mostly taught Ruby, but I didn't want to only apply for Ruby jobs, so I started learning JavaScript on my own. But if you like the language your bootcamp taught you, you can just stick to that and continue reviewing the material. I would try to stick to one because a trap students fall into is when they learn Python for a week and then they're like, oh, this is too hard where I don't like it. Let me jump to another language. And then they're like, oh, this one, I don't like it either. And then they just give up. For resources that I used to learn JavaScript after the coding bootcamp, I used YouTube, Code Academy, and Udemy. Whatever resource you use, try to keep the momentum you had during the coding bootcamp and continue coding. You don't always have to take a course. You can also improve the project that you worked on during the bootcamp. Step number eight, interview. If you went through all of these steps, it will be time for interviews. And don't worry if you're not getting interviews because I will be going over what to do when you're not getting interviews later in this video as well. Now let's talk about how the interview process works. Most companies will have an initial phone or video screen. It means the company liked your resume and they want to talk to you more. This stage was pretty casual and usually lasted about 20 to 30 minutes. I felt like as long as you were qualified and enthusiastic, you will be able to move on to the next round, which was usually coding assignment or interview. The common types of coding interviews include doing an online assessment at home or on site, a live coding session where they give you a prompt and you live code while you're talking through what you are coding. And I've also seen take home assignments. And after this, some companies will do another round of interviews where they bring you in or do it online to do another coding interview or just ask some questions to see if you're a good fit for the company. If it's live coding, a tip I have would be to talk while you're coding so that the interviewer knows what you are thinking. It's not always about getting the right answer, but when you are stuck, they want to see how you problem solve and communicate. I was interviewing for three companies at the same time, and as soon as I got my first offer, I stopped interviewing for the rest of the companies. And I am extremely grateful I got this offer. But I also received a lot of questions saying, what do I do if I'm not getting any interviews? Why am I not getting hired? If you're not getting any interviews in the first place, it might mean that your resume is not compelling enough. Check to see if your format is easy to read, if you listed out all your technical skills, if you have any typos, and so on. You can also ask your career advisor at your bootcamp to look over your resume if that's an option, but if that's not available, you can also reach out to your classmates or people on LinkedIn. If you're getting the initial phone screen, but you're not getting through the technical interviews, it might mean that you need to continue coding and do some mock interviews. 
I would also recommend looking into internships because having at least some real world experience will really boost you up. Doing an internship doesn't mean you have to do that forever. You can just do it for two, three months to learn how people code in real life and you can put that experience on your resume and then apply to other full-time positions. To sum it up, put together a compelling resume, continue coding even after the bootcamp ends, and build up your confidence. If you continue studying and sending in those applications, it will pay off at the end. And always remember to take care of yourself. I've also filmed a review of the coding bootcamp I went to and also a video of things you should know before joining a coding bootcamp if you haven't attended one already. So I'll leave the link in the description below. I will also be making more videos that will help you with your career and about my experience working in tech. So please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.